I want to start by asking a question. What do the following four incidents have in common? The Enron scandal, the Holocaust, the Sandy Hook Elementary School shootings, and the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Answer, the people most directly responsible for each were men. Take a moment and think of terrorist attacks, acts of violence, political scandals, financial mishaps, and so on. Whose faces come to mind? In many cases, the people directly involved are men. Is this a coincidence, or is there something deeper going on here? There is a crisis of masculinity that typically goes unacknowledged. It impacts everyone, men, women, children, and the planet. Although the previous incidents are rather extreme, consider these US statistics. Males comprise of 95% of incarcerated people and three quarters of the homeless. One third of children in America live apart from their biological fathers. 94% of rapists are men. The government spends $100 billion every year on programs such as child support enforcement and anti-poverty efforts to support father absent homes. My point is not that men are bad or evil or that women are better than men. Rather, it's to recognize that there's a serious problem that needs to be addressed. And I believe this problem is not something that is inherent in men, but that we are taught. So how exactly does this happen? For too long, we've adopted a boys will be boys attitude and the traits that we assume to be inherent in men, such as violence, difficulty communicating, preoccupation with sex, and the inability to nurture are just how men are. We seldom consider that we create the social conditions that contribute to these behaviors. For example, it is no wonder that men are so obsessed with sex when it is one of the few socially acceptable means of intimacy for men, when we are bombarded by sex in the media, and when our self-worth is tied to our sexual prowess. This accounts for way more than men naturally having high sex drives. Although each culture has its own rules around what it means to be a man, boys in America are taught to adhere to the boy code, or the four pillars of masculinity. Pillar one, no sissy stuff. Don't act like girls or women, which incidentally reinforces the idea that it's bad to be female. Pillar two, the sturdy oak. Do it yourself. Don't show weakness or emotion. Pillar three, the big wheel. Focus on success, wealth, and achievement. And pillar four, give them hell. Don't show fear. Be tough, aggressive, and daring. Images of what it means to be a real man are reinforced in popular media and typically follow the four pillars of masculinity. By contrast, although they are revered, men such as Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Jesus are seldom referred to as examples of what it means to be a real man. The code also affects men in ways that include depression, difficulty parenting, sexual addiction and anxiety, and having few, if any, intimate male friendships. Having spent their entire lives trying to follow the code, many men have no idea who they are or are afraid to be themselves. Men are terrified to break the code. For example, think of how uncomfortable ma many men would be to cry in public, display affection towards other men, share intimate feelings about their lives with men without talking about sex, turn down a dare, or act feminine in any way. Should a man break the code, there are consequences. He might be called a girl or a pussy. He might be called a faggot or a homo. He might be shamed, bullied, beaten, or even killed. Because being gay is associated with being like a woman, homosexuality violates the code. Unfortunately, because of the code, many men are too afraid or ashamed to admit that there's a problem, let alone do anything about it. They cover up with bravado, humor, or acting as though everything's fine. Often it takes some kind of crisis to make men take a deeper look at their lives and acknowledge what's not working. Despite holding the majority of the world's political, religious, and economic power, men are clearly suffering. Many men then enact this suffering onto others. Women and children, not to mention other men, pay a severe price for the code of masculinity. Clearly, the code is not working. As I mentioned earlier, these behaviors aren't necessarily inherent in men. Consider cultures where men openly express their feelings, care for their children, use violence as a last resort, or hold hands in public. Clearly, men have the ability to be different. The question is, do we have the courage to be different? The courage to challenge ideas around what it means to be a man when those ideas cause suffering or harm? The courage to teach boys a different way of being? The courage to drop the personas, get real, and be true to who we are? Instead of trying to define masculinity, we can learn to honor the uniqueness of each and every boy and man. We can start living from the inside out instead of looking to others to tell us what's okay. We can stand up to the code, acknowledge its impact, and allow a new way to emerge. What does it mean to be a real man? It means you being real. Real about who you are and what you feel. Real about your strengths, limitations, and mistakes. Real about your biggest dreams and your deepest fears. Real about the kind of relationships you want with those you love real about what truly matters to you. I talk about many of these things in my book, Radical Men, including 50 simple practices that any man can do. If you are a man, a parent of a boy, or someone who desires a better world, I urge you to take a step towards creating a new model for masculinity. 
you have the power to do something about it. Thank you.